one. Could Sverchkov also making the first spacewalk of his career? And as extravehicular crew member two, or EV2, he'll be wearing the Orlon suit, bearing the blue stripes. Uh, two, two cosmonauts will also have the benefit of wearing helmet cameras uh, on their uh, suits uh, so that we can get a bird's eye view view looking down uh, at uh, the work that they'll be doing as they clamber about uh, the Russian segment of the edition. Uh, Ryshikov's helmet camera number that you'll see in a ghostly figure on the lower right hand side when that, that uh, helmet camera view is available will be number 20. Could Sverchkov's helmet camera is number 18. The two cosmonauts have spent the better part of the last two weeks preparing their suits for today's space walk along taking outside with them and they've reviewed all of their procedures and for all of today's activities again uh, this spacewalk the 232nd spacewalk in support of space station upgrades is the eighth spacewalk outside the station this year again noteworthy since this is the first spacewalk to be conducted out of the Poisk module on the space facing side of the Russian segment of the complex it is a full house at the International Space Station thanks to the uh, arrival late Monday night of the crew of resilience the crew dragon that launched from the Kennedy space on Sunday evening arriving some 27 and a half hours later for an automated docking at the forward end of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. From left to right is Kate Rubin, uh, along uh, with her two Russian cosmonaut crewmates on a Soyuz spacecraft a month ago, back on October 14th. Uh, to her uh, right on this uh, crew portrait is Crew Dragon and Resilience Pilot Victor Glover, Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency uh, Flight Engineer Soichi Noguchi, uh, Sergei Rizhikov, the station commander who is uh, getting ready to uh, conduct his spacewalk today, uh, Mike Hopkins, the commander of Resilience that arrived at the station late Monday night, Shannon Walker, uh, mission specialist aboard Resilience, and on the far right is Sergei Kud Sverchkov, who will be exiting shortly along with uh, Rizhikov for today's spacewalk. And uh, please continue on my go. Copy. We're switching to sheet. At this hour, uh, suited up inside the uh, Poisk airlock, uh, both Rizhikov and Kudsverchkov will be starting to pre-breathe pure oxygen their bloodstreams of any nitrogen that may exist and prevent uh, any condition uh, known as decompression sickness or the bends as they step out into the vacuum of space. The spacewalk uh, that is uh, scheduled to begin uh, about an hour from now actually winds up uh, with a series of procedures to uh, ensure that the uh, initial use of this Poisk airlock uh, will be uh, good to go from a technical standpoint. That uh, will uh, result in the uh, closing of the hatch uh, to uh, between the Poisk airlock and the International S uh, Space Station's Zvezda module by Kate Ru Rubens. Then uh, Rizhikov and Kudsverchkov will depressurize the Poisk module to 550 millimeters of mercury. Uh, they will uh, conduct a leak check at that point to make sure that the seals around that hatch uh, have good integrity uh, before uh, they uh, continue their pre breathing procedures. They will then uh, conduct a second leak check. Uh, on the station side uh, of the uh, interface between the Poisk and the International Space Station. So Kate Rubens and the two cosmonauts on both sides of that uh, airlock interface will be conducting leak checks to make sure Poisk uh, is good to go for uh, the future operations in, in support of spacewalking activities at the International Space Station. Once those leak checks are performed, uh, the Poisk will be uh, depressurized down to vacuum and the two cosmonauts will open up the hatch uh, to the Poisk airlock, exposing themselves to the vacuum of space. They'll conduct a visual inspection of the hatch seals to make sure that there's no uh, foreign object debris or nothing uh, out of the ordinary with those hatch seals. They'll close the hatch a second time 
uh, and will do a partial repressurization of Poisk to 260 millimeters of mercury uh, in a final uh, series of leak checks to make sure that we have good integrity on that brand new airlocks hatch. Following a uh, successful leak check, they'll depressurize Poisk the vacuum one final time, open up the hatch for a second time, and resume uh, their remaining spacewalking tasks. First, uh, could Sverchkov will float outside, followed by Rizhikov, uh, and we'll be showing you all of those tasks in just a moment. Today's spacewalk actually scratches the surface uh, of an intricate plan to decommission the venerable Piers docking compartment prior to its departure from the space station next year that will clear the way for the launch of the Nyoka Multipurpose Laboratory module on a proton rocket and its docking to the same port Piers has occupied since September of 2001. One of the tasks Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov will perform today will be to move a telemetry cable from Piers to Poisk as work gets underway to set the stage for the end of Piers, which has served as both a docking port and an airlock for Russian spacewalks which was launched to the International Space Station back on November 10th, 2009, nine years after the Piers docking compartment was launched, will now serve uh, as well as a docking port and as an airlock for Russian spacewalks until that multipurpose laboratory module arrives at the International Space Station, which will give uh, the Russians uh, a couple of airlocks from which to perform spacewalks in the future and there are a passel of spacewalks that lie ahead for the uh, integration and activation of the multi-purpose laboratory module once it arrives on that uh, on a uh, proton rocket uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome next year and the region is and 0 0.4 Copy. That's what we see on the display. And the difference is 4, EV2, 0.31, EV1, 0.32. Copy. The work uh, to be done outside today by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, uh, entails a variety of different tasks. Again, uh, the primary task is uh, to begin an, uh, the very uh, laborious process of decommissioning the Piers docking compartment, but uh, we have an animated uh, overview of that spacewalk now uh, that uh, we can provide that will show you all of the elements to be conducted by the two cosmonauts today during Russian spacewalk number 47. Russian EVA 47 will be conducted by Sergei Ryzhikov as in the red striped suit and Sergei Kuzverchkov striped suit. Mini Research Module 2 or MRM2 will be the first time used as a Russian airlock, replacing docking compartment 1 or DC1. The new EVA hatches seals will be checked out before the crew egresses MRM2. EV2 will egress and EV1 will hand out the new FGB flow control regulator 1 in its airtight container. Then EV1 will egress MRM2. The two will translate to the FGB and install the air on the The two will then remove the MLI on the FGB panel. The two will work together and remove the failed flow control regulator and temp stow it out of the way. Then the two will open up the airtight container, take out the new flow control regulator, and install the new flow control regulator panel 1. MLI will be opened on the new flow control regulator and the connector. The connectors will then be mated to FGB. Photos will be taken and all MLI will be closed. The two will then stow the old flow control regulator panel 1 into the airtight container and close the door. They will release the airtight container from the FGB and translate to MRM2 and stow the airtight container inside MRM2. Then they will retrieve the window cleaning tool. The two will then translate to the two transit B cable and remove it. They will then route Transit B and connect it to the SM patch panel.
The crew will then translate to DC-1 and remove the SNP-407 type connector experiment from the DC-1 handrail. Then they will translate over to the service module, window number 8, and clean it. The crew will then translate up Strela Boom to the MRM-2 and redirect the Bakada-O, or the Plume Impingement and Deposit Monitoring Unit. Then the crew will translate over to the MRM-2 hatch and egress. This will conclude Russian EVA-47. EV2. Increments. And, and uh, as you heard uh, during uh, that narrated animation, it is the of the so-called Transit B antenna feeder uh, that is at the interface of the piers docking compartment of the Zvezda service module and its reconnection to the interface uh, to the Poisk module that uh, technically begins uh, all of the work associated with uh, transferring uh, spacewalk airlock tasks from Piers, which has been used uh, since its launch in September of 2001 for Russian-based spacewalks, to the Poisk airlock, which is being employed for the first time today. And, uh, place the uh, hatch handle nearby. Copy. Uh, so, Kay, Kay, please put the hatch tool uh, in the pocket nearby. Yes, I will do that. It will be in the pocket next to the hatch. Copy. As I understand it correctly, we have a standard display. While uh, Ryzhikov and Kudsverchkov are uh, continuing preparations inside the Poisk airlock for their spacewalk today, aboard uh, the Crew Dragon Resilience, uh, you see Shannon Walker at the bottom of your screen, uh, joined uh, by uh, Suichi Noguchi, uh, as, he, as they uh, work to transfer equipment that was brought to the International Space Station aboard Crew Dragon. Uh, the uh, the work uh, that they have been involved in is uh, the transferring of equipment and cargo that was uh, launched aboard uh, the Crew Dragon atop a Falcon 9 rocket by SpaceX on Sunday night from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, they are uh, seven uh, crew members strong now aboard the International Space Station, all part of the Expedition 64 crew, and will be dropping in to take a look at uh, their work from time to time throughout the course of the day. There's another view of uh, Japanese astronaut Suichi Noguchi, the third human to have flown on three different spacecraft uh, during a uh, spaceflight career, following in the footsteps of Wally Shara and John Young, uh, Noguchi uh, returning to the International Space Station for his second long-duration mission and his third mission to the station overall. It is in depressed position. Depressed is confirmed. Copy. When, while uh, the pressure is decreasing, please switch to Q uh, card 4, step 6, uh, depressed to depressed. Oh, all right. Q card 4, step 6. You card four, step six. I'm ready. And what is the uh, current uh, excess pressure in your system? 0 0.02 for EV1. 0 0.01. 
for EV2 copy and what is the uh, current MV pressure gauge reading in MRM2? It is 742. 742 copy. Well, 747. Okay, copy. And you go to start the deep press. Please open case the SO, start up the timer. And when the pressure reaches 550 on MV, please close case the SO valve. Uh, and stand by for LED to um, go, go off. And please uh, monitor the uh, pressure decrease. Copy. And you're going to open KSO depressed valve. It's in work. Copy. With the uh, hatch closed between the Poisk module and the Zvezda service module, Rizhikov and Kudsverchkov uh, will uh, open up a valve uh, to begin the depressurization of Poisk down to 550 millimeters of mercury, the initial step in a multi-step process uh, to test the integrity of the Poisk module and its seals. Report the pressure reading. Pressure reading is 660, 650. This is in that pressure reading. Copy. Stand by for uh, 550 reading. Copy. 610. Copy. 600. 590. Copy. Good. 570. Copy. 550 closing. As they depressed valve. Copy. Because the depressed valve is closed and the uh, pressure reading is, LED is not illuminated, the current pressure is 554 millimeters. All right, and please start, start the 10 minute timer for uh, pressure stabilization uh, in MRM2 copy. 1349. And, uh, Located on the Rosviet module port on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment, she is free to move about the cabin throughout the course of today's spacewalk. Right. All right, copy. We're standing by then. Uh, into, uh, the, what is the position of the temperature uh, control handle? It is in position one and four. The, uh, and for EV2, it is in position 3 copy, and uh, how does it feel? Is it cool enough, comfortable? Uh, yes, uh, it is. Okay. The International Space Station and its seven crew members flying from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator at an altitude of 260 statute miles, passing uh, just to the northwest of the capital of Somalia, Mogadishu. Doesn't fit properly, and so it's it's kind of bowed in the middle. I don't know if that's going to be good enough or not. Okay, we copy. We're checking. That is Shannon Walker uh, aboard the Crew Dragon Resilience again, uh, yes, referencing uh, the transfer of cargo from Resilience in into the International Space Station uh, that is occupying most of the. Uh, Dragon crew's time today as uh, they uh, continue on with other work uh, parallel to the spacewalk uh, that is scheduled to begin uh, with the uh, opening of the hatch to the Poisk module a short time from now.
нормально? Да, нет. Это окей? Okay? Uh, yes, I guess it's off a bit. It's, it keeps increasing, but it does not exceed the security. Uh, Sergey, what is the current MRM2 uh, pressure reading? It decreased a bit. Currently, it is 575. 575, uh, that's okay. Coffee. And please proceed with pressure stabilization. Coffee. Rizhikov and Kuds Fertikov continue to monitor pressure inside the Poisk module. They are testing uh, the integrity of uh, the seals on uh, the Poisk airlock, which is being employed for the first time today for a Russian spacewalk. Once uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, complete uh, the preliminary set of leak checks at the uh, Poisk module and open up the hatch, a Russian spacewalk, uh, its duration is measured from hatch open to hatch close. So once the hatch is open, the clock will start on what is known as PET or phased elapsed time for the duration of the spacewalk until hatch close. Now, they will be closing the hatch here, uh, again, as part of the leak uh, checks associated with the first use of this Poisk airlock, but that will not stop the clock today. The clock will run from initial hatch opening uh, to the void of space until hatch closure at the end of today's planned six-hour spacewalk. A U.S. spacewalk out of the Quest airlock is measured in phased elapsed time from uh, the time that astronauts put their suits on internal battery power until they're back inside the airlock and begin to repressurize Quest. Two minutes left uh, before the end of the 10 minutes stabilization. The current pressure is 557, 557, so it's the the tendency to rise uh, forward a little bit. Copy. That's good. The good news. That report from uh, Sergei Rizhikov indicating uh, that pressure inside Poisk in it, this initial uh, partial depressurization of the airlock is holding steady. That's good. 10 minutes is over. I am ready to start five minutes timer. Okay, 10 minutes of stabilization has passed. So, MRM2 pressure, uh, could you please report it? MRM2 pressure. 757. Oh, so, sorry, 5. 
577. Correction, 577. Okay. Сергей, давай еще раз Сергей. Okay, 575 or 577, Сергей? 577, Moscow. 577. Okay, timer for the leak check for five minutes in work. Okay, so PHO SU MRM2 leak check timer, five minute timer has started. Okay, copy. So the pressure is stable, the timer has started. Copy. Uh, this is uh, Kate. I copy the pressure. Kate Rubens uh, monitoring uh, the uh, pressure integrity of Poisk from the state docking interface between the Zvezda service module. If you uh, recall the configuration, uh, the Poisk is on the space-facing side or the zenith side of the Russian segment. Piers uh, docking commit, uh, which has been used exclusively uh, for Russian spacewalks since its arrival back in September 2001, is on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment. One and two, this is medical support team. Could you please report uh, how do you feel, how you feel? EV1 feels great. EV2 feels good. Copy. Thank you so much, guys. One other uh, noteworthy uh, st statistic, uh, an anniversary coming up. Today's work uh, on the Zarya module by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to replace uh, the hardware associated with a fluid flow panel that regulates uh, the uh, plumbing, uh, the flow of uh, liquids uh, through the plumbing of the uh, Zarya module of the International Space Station comes two days shy, today's spacewalk, two days shy of the 22nd anniversary of the launch of Zarya as the first element of the International Space Station atop a proton rocket on November 20th, 1998 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Five, seven, seven. 577 is the pressure. Copy, 577, please continue monitoring two more minutes. Uh, it's a firm, continue monitoring. Once again, if you're just joining us, Sergei Ryzhikov, uh, the Expedition 64 commander and flight engineer Sergei Kud Sverchkov, inside the Poisk module, hatch is closed. They're suited up in their respective Russian Orlan spacesuits, having conducted a partial depressurization of the airlock in a preliminary integrity of the seals on that airlock that is being used for the first time today uh, for uh, support of a Russian spacewalk. Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov will open up the hatch to Poisk a short time from now and then close the hatch back uh, on uh, Poisk and do a partial repressurization of the airlock in a test of the seals. Uh, they'll also do an inspection of those seals to make sure they're 
pristine uh, before they open up the hatch uh, for a final time and float outside to begin today's work. Moscow Station, after five minutes of uh, monitoring. The pressure is stable, 577, delta is zero. Okay, copy that. So delta P is zero, MRM2, 577, pressure. We copy that, and now on my go, you will proceed uh, with your actions as per the procedure copy. So the hatches are not leaking, so Kate, you can go to PGO and close the hatch PGO as to SM, and will be standing by for the hatch closure. Okay, I will do that. Moscow. So I, am I taking inaudible uh, with me to FGB? Yes, you are going to PGO and close PGO as to a SAM hatch, and we'll be standing by for your report on that, Kate. All right. I will do that, and I will transition to PGO. Copy. EVA 1 and EVA 2. So uh, you are going to uh, the next page of Q card 5, sheet 1. Step 8, Orlan Purge, start of free breeze. So far, so good. Uh, good integrity on the uh, hatch seals to the Poisk module. Kate Rubens will complete uh, the closure of a series of hatches at the docking interface between Poisk and the Zvezda service module before she uh, makes her way back uh, toward the U.S. segment of the station. Meanwhile, uh, that will set the stage for Rizhikov and Kudsverchkov to continue breathing pure oxygen to purge the nitrogen out of their bloodstreams and prevent any condition uh, known as the bends or decompression sickness from occurring once they do step outside a short time from now. This is Kate. I am in Pego. How do you copy me, Moscow? EV1 copies you. Well, the, uh, EV2 also copies you. And we are in Moscow standing by for the hedge closure. I am closing the hatch. As soon as I'm done, I will report it. Copy, Kate. EV1, EV2, you can start working step 8, Orlan Purge, start of free breeze. It's cue card number 5. Copy, cue number 5 is ready. Sounds good. At the completion of uh, pre-breathing, once uh, the nitrogen has been purged from their bloodstreams, Rizhikov and Kudsverchkov will complete uh, the initial depressurization of Poisk down to vacuum and open up the uh, Poisk hatch to inspect uh, the hatch seals uh, once that hatch has been opened. They will then close the hatch back up and do a partial repressurization to about 260 millimeters uh, in one final check of the integrity of those seals. So the, you can see the timer there, and uh, it will be incrementing, and uh, also the, the pressure in, uh, for EV1 is 005, and and the same for EV2. Copy. Now, during five minutes, uh, you will stand by uh, looking at the timer incrementing and, and uh, we will have to get not less than 250 atmospheres at the end of it all. So, EV1 has 89, EV2 has 90 reading now. 
Copy. Okay, so uh, the purge is, con is going on. Copy. Everything going very smoothly uh, with this uh, check of the integrity of the Poisk module seals uh, in this initial depressurization, repressurization exercise uh, to uh, validate uh, Poisk uh, for use as an airlock for Russian spacewalks, the first of which uh, will be occurring imminently as Rizhikov and Kudsverchkov continue pre-breathing pure oxygen. Close. Copy your report. Kate Pago SUSM hatch is closed. Uh, good news. Thank you, Kate. Kate Rubens, uh, of course, launched with uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov on the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome back on October 14th. Sergey, once or uh, when the, is the timer now? Two minutes are left. 242 is the reading of the timer. They are beginning uh, their sixth week on board the International Space Station and, of course, uh, have been joined by the four crew members of the Crew Dragon Resilience who arrived at the space station late Monday night. A seven-person crew now on board for uh, the next six months. Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kud Sverchkov will return home in April as uh, the uh, resilience crew then uh, will be joined by both the Russian crews on a Soyuz vehicle and the next Crew Dragon crew, the Crew 2 crew, uh, that will be commanded by NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough. Once again, uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, soon to begin the first spacewalk of their respective careers. Uh, Rizhikov uh, now flying for the second time in space. This is Kud Sverchkov's first flight into space. Again, the 232nd spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades and the eighth spacewalk out of the International Space Station in 2020. Rizhikov uh, will be wearing the suit bearing the red stripes, helmet camera number 20, that you'll see in a uh, ghostly figure on the lower right-hand side of your screen once uh, the two cosmonauts are outside of the Poisk module. Kud Sverchkov will be wearing uh, the suit bearing the blue stripes as EV2, our extravehicular crew member number two. His helmet camera number will be 18. It, PSS Delta is 415 for EV1 and 415 for EV2. Okay, now please transfer BSS into the pre-breathe pre uh, position and stand by for the message purge normal. Copy. So now we have this message purge normal for EV1 and the same for EV2. Now you have to see, you will see the pre breathe screen right now and the timer uh, will be incrementing in the corner of the screen. And the time of the pre breathe start 14.013. Uh, 
14.13. Copy that. And what about the pressure in the space suit, guys? 007 for EV1, 007 for EV2 is the space suit pressure. Copy. Thank you. Now you will start working the next step on my go. Copy. You can start working. Step 9, a pressure equalization in MRM2 and PHO. Between MRM2 and PHO, page 9, cue card number 5. This is cue card 5, sheet 2, step 9, pressure equalization between MRM2 and PHO. Okay, copy. Q card five, sheet two, step nine, copy. You can start performing step nine. Okay. Copy. So I'm transitioning to repress uh, until zero one, and then uh, the pre-breathe uh, airlock. Yes, uh, it's a go. You can start. So the, I have re uh, press press in on BSS. So the pressure is decreasing. So zero one on the star. This is uh, the repressurization of Poisk uh, to enable Ryzhikov and Kudsverchkov to complete uh, the pre-breathe of pure oxygen, uh, cleansing any nitrogen uh, that is uh, residually residing uh, in their bloodstreams. They then uh, will uh, conduct a depressurization to vacuum of the Poisk airlock uh, before opening up the hatch for the first of two hatch openings, all part of this uh, preliminary check of Poisk and validating its capability to support uh, today's spacewalk. And um, I'm proceeding. So the Depeho SU is open. So the Depeho SU is open. The pressure is decreasing slowly, um, but it is increasing on MV, so it is 630. And what about the uh, pressure in the space suit? The current one is 012 for EV2. It is 645 in MRM2. The current pressure in MRM2 is 645. This is a view from an external camera on the International Space Station showing the Poisk airlock, uh, the module itself, which uh, has to this point uh, served as a docking port for arriving Russian Soyuz vehicles. First launched uh, on November 10th, 2009 and installed uh, two days later upon its arrival at the station, today to be used for the first time as an airlock in support of Russian spacewalks. MRM2 MV pressure is 755. And uh, uh, the tendency to increase. Kate, what about PHO pressure, tunnel pressure? Kate Moscow. 658 is the pressure in PHO. Copy PHO 658. So what is the space suit pressure? Okay. 01 for the one for the uh, EV1 and 02 for the EV2 copy. You can proceed to the next uh, cue card number five, sheet three, uh, step ten. MRM2 per hour depressed to 550 millimeters. Copy. Uh, Kate also copies.
Будешь готов и комментируй свои действия. If you want, when you are ready, uh, please give a running commentary. Okay, step 10. You card 5. Fragment 3. Sheet 3. We will open KSDSO, bleed to 550 millimeters, uh, controlling the time, and then I will close KSDSO valve. Yes, that's right. It's so open KSDSO. When the pressure is 550, close the valve KSDSO. Copy. KSD so valve is open. The I have LED. The timer uh, is has started. The current pressure is seven hundred thirty. So seven. 120, 630, 620, now it is 600, even. Copy, Sergey. 580 now is the pressure reading. 570, 560, copy. 555, I am closing the SD valve. The SD is closed. The pressure starts increasing again. It is 560, the current pressure reading. Copy. 65 now. Uh, please monitor it on the timer. 45 seconds. That sounds good. And, and send the command to close KVD PHO S2. After the command goes through, uh, you will have to inhibit uh, this. Command. Okay, copy. I'm sending the command to close KVD equalization valve PHO SO. 1420 is the time. The LED is not illuminated. I'm sending the inhibit. The inhibit is sent. Permission uh, is not uh, illuminated now. The MRM2 pressure is 580. Kate, we are standing by for the PHO uh, pressure stabilization now. Five minutes. Okay, copy. This is Kate. What is PHO pressure when uh, you know it all started? Okay, the current pressure is uh, 695. Uh, Sergey, on on the ATU, could you please release the transmission button? Copy. Will you reach, uh, Sergey? To yeah, I will try. The transmission. Yes, that's right. What about uh, line two? I I should leave it. Yes, leave it as is. It is the left one. Yes, left lower one. Can you reach it? Let me try. This is EV1. Guys, don't rush. You know, the stabilization needs to be for five minutes, so there is no hurry at all. So we did not hear each other when it was released. Now we pressed it again, the transmission button. Sergey, so could you please repeat? We, there was a dropout. We did not hear. So what happened? When we released the transmission button, the connection, the communication between EV1 and 2 uh, disappeared. So as soon as we pressed it, uh, we started hearing each other again. So you pressed it again. Yes, that's right. Copy. Okay, so let's leave this configuration for now. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, a view of the uh, Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. 
which is currently flying from northwest to southeast at an altitude of 259 statute miles over the uh, northwest Pacific Ocean. Everything on board in great shape. The uh, five U.S. OS crew members, U.S. orbital segment crew members, Kate Rubens, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, Sobichi Noguchi, the latter four having arrived uh, aboard the uh, Crew Dragon Resilience late uh, Monday night to form a seven-person crew on board the orbital outpost. Everyone in good shape. Uh, the five U.S. OS crew members currently working inside uh, on a variety of uh, tasks, including uh, utilization, as well as transferring equipment from Resilience over to the International Space Station. Meanwhile, Rubens uh, has uh, completed her work in support of the uh, preparation of the cosmonauts on board uh, Expedition 64 Commander Sergei Ryzhikov and Flight Engineer Sergei Kudsverchkov, who are inside the Poisk module conducting uh, a methodical series of tasks on a checklist to depressurize uh, the Poisk, repressurizing it, and then depressurizing it again prior to opening up the spacewalk hatch. And this is the first ever use of Poisk airlock. This is the uh, first tentative step in the ultimate decommissioning of the other module on the opposite side of the Russian segment, the Piers docking compartment that has served uh, both as a docking port and as a spacewalking airlock since it was launched in September of 2001. Piers next year will be disposed of uh, through uh, the use of a Progress resupply vehicle. Uh, a Progress will be launched, will dock to Piers, and then uh, it will uh, be detached from the uh, Earth-facing side of the Russian segment and deorbited to clear the decks for the launching of the Nauka multipurpose laboratory module, a huge 22-ton module, uh, 43 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter, uh, that will be launched on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome to replace piers and serve both as a research laboratory uh, as well as a docking port and an airlock for Russian spacewalks. Five minutes stabilization time is over. Kavadepago is to valve should be closed manually by you. Sounds good. Kavadepago SM. What position again, Moscow? Closed. Kavadepago SM valve should be closed manually. Kvd SM is in the closed position now. Copy, Kate. Now, what about PHO pressure on MV? Five nine nine is the current pressure. Copy, Kate. Five nine nine. Okay, start for five minute timer to monitor. The pressure copy inaudible from EV1. Sergey, one and two. So, uh, pressure gauge pressure in your spacesuit? Zero eighteen uh, for EV1 and zero eighteen for EV2. Great. And so, what about the uh, pre brief timer? How much is time is left? Fifteen minutes, forty-five seconds. Copy, that's good. We are in the uh, very early stages of today's activities that will ultimately lead to Rizhikov and Kudsverchkov uh, floating outside of the Poist airlock uh, to begin their work for the day. Once outside, uh, they have about five and a half hours of uh, spacewalking tasks to complete, including uh, the replacement of uh, the hardware for a uh, fluid flow regulator uh, that uh, does just what the name suggests, uh, provides uh, the right regulation of fluids to flow through the uh, plumbing of the Zarya module of the International Space Station. Uh, the spacewalk occurring two days shy of the 22nd anniversary of the launch of Zarya on a proton rocket 
from the Baikonur Cosmodrome as the first element of the International Space Station. They then uh, will make their way to disconnect a telemetry antenna called a Transit B antenna that uh, is connected at the interface between the Zvezda service module and uh, the Piers docking compartment and reconnected to the interface to the Poisk module, the first uh, of many, many steps in the months ahead that will lead to the decommissioning of Piers uh, as uh, a spacewalking airlock and a docking port for arriving Russian vehicles. They uh, will retrieve a uh, bracket that's housed on the outside of Piers that contains uh, a series of material science experiments. They'll clean a window on the uh, Zvezda service module and redirect a uh, thruster impingement monitoring unit on the Poisk module, all part of today's spacewalk. Once it begins, the spacewalk not yet underway, it will begin uh, with the initial opening of the hatch to the Poisk module following this series of activities to test the integrity of Poisk in terms of holding pressure, uh, both through a depressurization and repressurization set of uh, activities. Sergey, tell us the current pressure in PHO for M the MV. It is 600, so it is 600. We copy. Kate, five minutes are down. What's the pressure in PHO for the MV? And the PHO pressure per MV is 601. 601. Copy. And please proceed on my go from now on. Kate, so PHO pressure is 601, so now we open cover the valve, uh, cover the PGO SM and equalize the pressure between PHO and FGB. Copy. Kevade Pegao SM. Kevade Pegabo 
Fegeo SM is in position open. Copy, Kate, and please monitor the pressure in Fegeo per MV and in FGB till the pressures are equalized. So what is the pressure in FGB right now per MV? Six nine four is the current pressure. Not, not connected. And in FGB, unintelligible. Number two. Copy. FGB tekushi javlini po manova komator ete simso trite kiat. And in FGB per MV, current pressure is seven three five. Copy. That's good. We copy. Seven three five. And operator one and operator two, EV one and EV two. So. Just wanted to report that for the first suit it's zero seventeen and zero eighteen, and six eight. Two is the pressure, and the time for the desaturated the, for the pre-breathe that we have left is 8:40. Copy. And what is the? Could you come again? What's the pressure in MRM2? 682 is the pressure in MRM2. You're hearing uh, the interpretation of uh, communications between. Uh, the flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center in Karolyov on the outskirts of Moscow and uh, the two cosmonauts, Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov, who are inside the Poisk module, uh, currently uh, pre-breathing pure oxygen as part of the uh, validation of Poisk to be used as an airlock for Russian spacewalks, which it will uh, today for the first time. They uh, conducted a partial depressurization of Poisk now pre-breathing pure oxygen. They will uh, open up the hatch to Poisk uh, after completing uh, the depressurization down to vacuum a short time from now, inspect the seals around uh, the hatch to make sure that uh, they're in good shape before closing the hatch and doing a partial repressurization prior to depressurizing uh, Poisk for one final time and opening up the hatch uh, to float outside to begin their spacewalk today. A uh, per MV seven three four. Monitoring uh, pressures inside uh, the Zvezda service module is NASA flight engineer Kate Rubens, who helped uh, the cosmonauts suit up earlier this morning in their Russian Orlan spacesuits. The International Space Station and its seven occupants, flying from northwest to southeast across the Pacific Ocean in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. 734. It's somewhere in between 734 and 735. Okay. And in FGB, the pressure is approximately the same. FGB PGO pressure is 734.5. Copy. All right, let's put the KVD valve in, elect in electrical control mode. Copy, in work. All right, KVD PGO SM is in electrical control mode. Copy. That's good. Sergey 1 and Sergey 2, we are done with the verifying at Opahau um, leak check and the um, hatches are leak tight and we are ready to continue with the pre-breathe. Okay, we are, we understand, and we have five minutes left on the timer. Copy. Uh, Sergey, uh, just uh, wanted to ask you to prepare um, cue card six, step 12. All right, I have it in front of me. 
И Сергей 1, Сергей 2, давайте And выполним с вами пункт 12.1. Let's put 12.1 in work, only step 12.1 to prep control. All right, pneumatic valve is off, uh, regulator prime. Uh, so we have prime first, uh, first and second. Thanks. First. Prime and then second. EV2. All right, stand by. Um, we have it as I have it as prime two. Copy. For, uh, the pump and the fans for EV1 and EV2 are on. The transmitter for EV1 is on, and I confirm the same for the EV2. For breathe, breathe. We have in the valve in position open. Okay, we copy. That is good. Let's stand by for the end of the countdown and then proceed per my go. All right, we are standing by for the next three and a half minutes. Сергей 1 and Сергей 2. How much is on the pre-breathe timer? A minute and a half. Copy. Moscow, we are done with the pre-breathe. 
And the account started implementing. No copy. We copy. Please prepare step to perform step 12.2, MRM to depress, and uh, please um, do it on my go. We copy. Sergey, you can put step 12.2 in work. Copy. So here we activate the injectors. In work. We put the injector in the, next, in the correct position. All right. And we're standing by for the five-minute timer. And we are dropping, going down on the pressure still. Once you unintelligible the injector, did you start? Did you get the timers that are with a countdown? Right, twenty nine. Well, oh, for me, it's not there. Sergei, TV2, you should get the injector, uh, like, at all two BSS, and then the atmospheres, and then you would have the counter there. So, yes, I do have it. All right, Sergei, open KVD SO valve and start depressing MRM2. Till what pressure? 12 millimeters, that's what we have planned. Please monitor the pressure in the module and also in the suit. So you would have to have 0 0.35, 0 0.34 in the suit and 350. All right, SO is open. The current pressure is 5. 3.0, and uh, pressure is 3.9 for me, as the SO close, uh, opened at 14.45, the current pressure is 480, we're monitoring the pressure drop till it gets to 350, no, 0 0.35, 0 0.34. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're following along, uh, the pre-breathe of pure oxygen by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov inside the Poisk module airlock is complete. They have uh, resumed uh, the depressurization of the airlock down to vacuum before opening up uh, the EVA hatch or the spacewalk hatch on the side of Poisk. That's out of the view that you just saw in this downlink video. Uh, we uh, are in a handover between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system at the moment. You can open Once uh, the hatch is open, they will conduct an inspection of the seals around the hatch to make sure that they are free of any debris before closing the hatch once again and conducting a partial repressurization of Poisk to about 260 millimeters of mercury for a final leak check before they open the hatch one more time and then we'll float outside to officially begin today's spacewalk that will be marked uh, by uh, a series of tasks, including uh, the repositioning of an antenna from the interface between the Poisk and the Zvezda service module to the Poisk module, the first step uh, in a long series of work uh, that will uh, result in the decommissioning of the pier's docking compartment as an airlock prior to its disposal next year. In work. KSD-2 valve is open. Current pressure is 270. Uh, <laughs> the sky is stable. And we are going to deactivate the injector in two minutes. So what's the counter? One minute, 15 seconds. Copy. That's good. 
the next step is when the pressure hits about 100 millimeters that the BSS or LAN interface unit needs to be put in the correct position. So once you hit that pressure, please let me know. Copy. Will do. So you would have to put the SDSO valve in the position in position closed. All right, in 34 seconds. Copy. Sergey, second, what's on the count? What's on the timer for you? 26, 26 seconds. All right. So once you get to zero, 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 you would be putting the uh, pneumatic valve. in the position closed. Please verify that they, that the inject, injector should be off. All right, counter is at zero, uh, pressure is 140, and we are putting the injectors um, in the off position. We are getting correct indicators indications and current pressure is 125 and we're standing by for the audio signal and the pressure in the suits for both is 0 0.38 copy that's good. And we are standing by uh, for your report uh, regarding Orlan interface unit um, that the pressure is 20 millimeters, zero two um, open for EVA. What's the pressure? The current pressure is 100. And we got the warning for both suits. The, we got the in signal for both suits. Correction. All right. And then please uh, be ready to put the BSS Orlan interface unit in um position for EVA. So with the uh, pre-breathe of pure oxygen having been completed and uh, everything uh, checked out by the cosmonauts uh, inside the Poisk airlock, that uh, module's airlock now being depressurized down to vacuum, uh, prior to the opening of the hatch that will mark the official start of the clock for today's spacewalk by uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov. 70 millimeters. Copy. Thank you. Delta for pressure drop is slowing down. Uh, the current pressure in is 15 millimeters. Sergei, we copy and we are standing by when pressure in MRM2 is going to reach 20 millimeters. And then uh, we when you hear uh, the uh, interpretation of the conversation between the Russian mission controllers in Korolyov and uh, the crew inside Poisk, the reference to Sergei 1 is to uh, Expedition 64 Commander Sergei Rizhikov. Sergei 2 is Kud Sverchkov. Right. We are at 40. We got another signal at 320. We got the signal for both suits. Copy, that's good.
Давление 30. Pressure is 30. Это? Copy. Pressure is 20 millimeters, and I am putting Orlan into um, on the Orlan interface unit in O2, open EVA, and stand by till you reach 12 millimeters in MRM, two per MV. Copy, and current pressure is 18 millimeters in MRM, two per MV. Copy. Fifteen millimeters is the pressure in MRM two. Сергей, So what is the pressure in this suit for ODSK? Zero point thirty-seven. And zero point thirty-eight for me. Okay, that's good. Pressure in MRM two is fourteen millimeters. Bobby, once the pressure goes down to twelve millimeters, please put it as the Two valve in position closed, and then as the SODC one also afterwards. After as the two put it also in position closed. Wilco. And the pressure is 12 millimeters. I am closing as the two in. As that two is in position closed, and I'm closing as the SO in position closed, and um, we are getting the, the message, the correct message. And what's the pressure in MRM2 currently? It is 11 millimeters. All right, please put step 13 in work. That's going to be MRM2 final leak check. Um, so please monitor uh, the pressure in MRM2 per MV. Copy. And please start the five-minute timer. Five-minute timer has been started. That's good. Copy. The uh, pressure inside the Poisk airlock is approaching vacuum, at which point uh, the hatch uh, will be open by uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, the first uh, in a series of uh, procedures that will lead to uh, it being opened for a second time to uh, permit uh, the spacewalk uh, to proceed, all part of uh, the validation of uh, the Poisk module uh, to be used for Russian uh, spacewalk activity to ensure that uh, the seals around uh, the hatch to Poisk are clean and uh, can hold pressure at a variety of different uh, intervals in the depressurization, repressurization procedures.
Сереж, давление... Сергей, where is the current pressure in MRM2? Two minutes have elapsed. Сейчас займу прежнее положение, чтобы точнее. Let me get in the original position to make sure I get the clear reading. Okay. Одиннадцать миллиметров. Eleven millimeters. Принято одиннадцать, хорошо. Copy eleven millimeters. Good. Чтобы вы понимали, там после окончания герметичности у нас с вами фрагменты, связанные с переходом на автономное питание, выполняться не будет. Мы находимся на электрофазе, на режиме электропитания. Вы будете выходного люка. И вы начнете После открытия осмотра я возвращаюсь на дуо по ходу. We'll repress pressure to 260 millimeters and we'll do the EV hatch leak check. Copy. Again, uh, the series of steps uh, you're hearing uh, being relayed uh, to the two cosmonauts from the Russian flight controllers in Korolyov, all part of uh, the checkout of the Poisk module's uh, airlock uh, seals, the hatchway. Uh, out uh, into the vacuum of space. Ryzhikov and Kudsverchkov are hooked up inside Poisk uh, to life support systems. Uh, they will go on internal Orlon suit power uh, as soon as uh, they are ready to exit uh, the Poisk airlock a short time from now. First, uh, the hatch will be open to Poisk. That will start the clock running on today's spacewalk, the 232nd, in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades. They will inspect uh, the seals around the circumference of the hatch before closing the hatch again and conducting a partial repressurization of the poise catch and the airlock to about 260 millimeters of mercury. One final leak check will be performed before they uh, depressurize uh, poise again down to vacuum and then they'll open up the hatch uh, for a second time and float outside to begin today's spacewalking work. Сергей, Uh, Artem, go ahead. Hello, guys. Uh, how are you feeling? All is well? All right. Uh, so, let's do a quick check up just to review. Uh, the staff will be working outside. Uh, outside. Do not rush. Uh, there is no need to rush. Uh, move your hands uh, and arms carefully. Make sure that you're not tired because you will be working for a long time. Uh, make, so, make sure uh, you uh, work uh, uh, carefully. To, Make sure that you ask. And then, first of all, I wanted to ask you to activate the helmet lights and cameras. EV2, the light is on. Copy. And the camera is on for EV2. This is EV1. The lights and cameras are on. Okay, copy. Lights and cameras on for both. 
Так, у меня светодиод не горит. Камера. And the camera LED is not illuminated. This is EV1. Well, I confirm activation now. Copy. Тогда следующий момент. Okay, so the next point. Please look around. Make sure that everything is tethered and your hooks are secured on the rails. This is EV2. I confirm that it is secured. Принято. Copy. This is EV1. Let me rehook the hook. Stand by one. I guess it will be better to come up from that side. Not really that convenient. This is EV hatch. My hook is closed. And I moved it onto a different location. Copy. So you're going to start the EV hatch opening procedure, get the hatch tool to open the hatch, and please put the tab, the hatch tab, in the position, uh, in the operating position. Copy. The um, latches or latch handle is fully deflected. Copy. And let me reposition myself. The two tabs are facing each other, and I can see that it is in the open position. Some, something is in the way. Uh, am I bumping against the tether? It's pulling. With the uh, pre-breathe of pure oxygen complete and uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, happy with what they're seeing in terms of the leak checks on the Poisk module airlock, Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov are checking all of their tools and tethers before they get the go-ahead to open up the hatch that will start the clock running on today's spacewalk. Yes, I can see. The International Space Station currently traveling over the South Atlantic, orbiting from southwest to northeast at an altitude of 260 statute miles. in the way. Okay, so let's do it like this. Yes, that's excellent. The tab is now in the uh, operating position, copy. And you're going to uh, install the hatch tool. Uh, on the um, uh, hatch drive shaft. It is installed, copy, and I'm ready now. We go to start the rotation and please monitor the uh, operation of rollers. Rollers are engaged, copy, copy all the rollers on my side are visible. Well, the paths are got wrapped around it. So, move it back. It's not moving. Okay, stand by. So, you need to move it until it clicks. Back. We had a quick calm drop out. We are going to have a calm drop out. Okay, so we're standing by for AOS. Yes, copy, standing by. Okay, that's more convenient. And I, I'm going to reposition myself so it's more convenient for you as well. So now it's uh, 
sort of funny. Well, I, I guess I will try to move my legs somewhere. Okay, should I lengthen the tether? Yes. Yes, we are supposed to be LOS right now, but uh, we can still talk. The quam is interrupted, so uh, let's wait for 30 seconds. All right. Uh, All right, you're going to proceed, and uh, could you uh, please pull the handle uh, all the way to hard stop? Copy, and uh, hold it until the uh, pressure drop begins. Okay, standing by. Okay, one, one second. Yes. And I can visually see... Dust. Okay, the pressure is decreasing. Current reading is five millimeters. Copy. And please hold it in that position. We are, guys, we're not getting the video now, so uh, please provide detailed commentary of the hedge uh, opening. Okay, copy. Four millimeters. Uh, this is the current pressure reading in the module. Copy. Okay, so I Step on it and it's one millimeter, actually less than one millimeter. Okay, copy. So you're going to open the hatch. Stand by. Uh, sure. Let me turn around. Sure. We had a quick LOS. How are you doing, guys? Yes. Please repeat your last. We did not copy. We had intermittent con. Well, we're opening the hatch. Are you ready for hatch opening? Well, the hatch is moving a bit, but uh, it's coming back to its initial positions. We'll try to pull it carefully, both of us. Okay, and Sergey, move to the right, copy. As much as you can. Can you reach it? No. Uh, not yet. Okay, like this. All right. Okay, got it. Let's do it. One, two, three. Uh, I have a feeling that it is spring loaded. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and try. Okay, okay it's open. It's appro approximately 20 to 25 degrees open. And I can see it on, on, on my side, the hatch seals are all even, uh, and the uh, position on the clock is 9 o'clock and then 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, it's all even, no damage, and the, I do not see anything on the contact surface, and I have inspected the contact surface, I do not see any uh, pod or residual uh, stuff. 
copy, and I'm trying to turn around closer to the hatch. Okay, let me further down. At 3 o'clock, this is what I'm expecting, and I am expecting the area from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, and up to 8 o'clock. It's uh, sort of interesting here. There's something, well, look, there's some, a piece of something, maybe a piece of tape, but other than that, the rubber seal is clean. I do not see any damage. And let me move down a bit. And did you manage to open the hatch fully? Okay, I keep in, inspecting the seals from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. I do not see any damage here. It's just small pieces of dust. I guess, yes, you can see that the dust coming out of here. On the seal, from the seals, and visually I do not see any damage. And if necessary, we can uh, photograph it. Yes, uh, please do so. It is necessary. Then go ahead and open the hatch fully and use the GoPro camera to photograph to film the perimeter. No, no, it's not necessary. Yes, I think so, too. So I just need to uh, hold on to something. Okay, okay, I'm holding the hatch and holding you, too. Okay. Okay, there it is. Whistler is removed. Whistler is on and it's recording, copy. I'm proceeding with the filming, starting from 12 o'clock position and moving clockwise as much as I can reach. All right, and uh, you're going just fine. Okay, I'm letting go. All right, that's excellent, like this. Going from 12 o'clock to... Okay, should you just give it to me? All right. Are you holding it? Yes. Okay, so I, I will keep... This is Mission Control Houston. The hatch uh, to the Poisk module is open for the first time ever. To uh, officially begin today's spacewalk, we are uh, standing by for an official time from the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov, outside of Moscow. Uh, legs are pushing against the uh, two cosmonauts uh, who have uh, worked uh, their way through all of the pre-breathe uh, procedures and the depressurization of Poisk up to this point to validate uh, the airlock's integrity are inspecting the seals around the circumference of the Poisk airlock hatch. So uh, as soon as we get an official start time for today's spacewalk, we'll pass it along. But again, uh, the hatch is open to Poisk, the 232nd spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly and Maintenance underway. Did you copy? Uh, film is complete. All right, uh, copy. Uh, you're going to close out filming. Hatch, and your go to close the hatch. Copy. Uh, please inspect the contact surface once again to make sure that there is no fog, that nothing came out during the uh, hatch opening, and please check rubber seals, make sure that the uh, clear of any debris. Uh, okay, there is nothing on the contact surface here. Uh, the, all the dust came out mostly. The contact surface is clean on my side. And, uh, and uh, flight controllers in Moscow now confirming the official start time for today's spacewalk. 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. 
with the opening of the hatch to the Poisk module. Again, today's official start time for the spacewalk by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, 9.12 a.m. Central, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. Should I move it? Yes, I'll go ahead. And I'm ready. Okay. I made space for you here. Okay, here it is. Okay, stand by. Your arm is in the way. It's pushing against it. Okay, excellent. Got it. I'm ready to close it. Put it in the operating position. Okay, copy. And you're going to... The next step uh, here will be uh, for Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to close this hatch once again and uh, repressurize uh, Poisk partially to about 260 millimeters of mercury uh, in one final leak check before they open up the hatch a second time uh, and then will float outside to begin yeah. their work in the void of space. But again, the clock will not uh, be... It, uh, the clock is moving now on today's spacewalk and will continue to tick away with the start time of 9.12 a.m. Central, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay. Do you see the rollers? Yeah, and they're moving in. Uh, okay, so move it all the way to stop, the hard stop until it clicks. Okay, excellent, great. All right, uh, Sergey, you're going to remove the hatch tool. Why? No, на всякий случай, чтобы well, just, just in case to make sure it doesn't get damaged during repress. Copy. It is removed now. Copy. And I will pass it on to Dima. Copy. Uh, Sergey, this is Dmitry. Uh, Please find your card 10. This is a separate procedure for repress, and please press it in step 3 and then repress to 260 millimeters. When you're ready, we will start. Okay, we'll retrieve the cue card now. It is slightly off to the side here. Yes, please move to shaft 3 your working area and uh, please set up the cue card. Cue card 10. Cue card 10, step 3. I'm going to repress the 260 millimeters. That's Copy. That's affirmative. And uh, we have the cue card. Well, if ready and set up, then you are go to start. Monitoring KSD2 valve, uh, KSD2 and KSD2 valves are closed on EVA uh, support panel in MRM2. KSD2 is not illuminated. And I am opening KSD2 as so it is enabled now. Uh, and I confirm that LED is on, copy, uh, starting the stopwatch and opening Kava Depeho as to valve, copy. Kava Depeho as to valve is open, and the pressure is increasing. Please report a current suit pressure and the MRM2 pressure. The pressure is 0.35, and the pressure gauge reading shows almost 30. Copy, that's good. The pressure is 0.3 for EV1 and for EV2 as well. And 70, okay. It is less than 
point zero two uh, during the compression. Well, I don't think we'll get to that. Actually, okay, that's affirmative. Module pressure is ninety. Copy. Suit pressure is point twenty six. Point twenty six for EV two. One minute is up. Copy. That's good. Module pressure is 120. Uh, two and two. This is the current suit pressure reading. Point 22. Is that correct? Yes. Point 22. Okay. One forty five, this is the module pressure and oral pressure indicator shows point nineteen for E V one. Copy. Two minutes. Two minutes. Of repress uh, pressure in module is one seventy and uh, suit pressure is point sixteen. Copy. That's good. We're moving to the pressure region of 260. When you reach 260 in MRM2, you will close KVDPHO SU from uh, EVA support panel in MRM2. Uh, yes, that's affirmative. We confirm all. And standing by for five minutes, pressure stabilization. If you don't get to 260, then we will be uh, monitoring the pressure during six minutes. Copy. We repressed the two fifteen in three minutes and the uh, pressure is point one for E V one, point one for E V two. Copy. Copy. Three point five minutes. Um, we have repressed to two forty. The pressure is zero point zero eight. Copy. Good. Current pressure reading is two fifty. Copy. Kate, what is the PHO pressure on MV pressure gauge? Inaudible. Two sixty, and then close and cover the PHO as a valve copy. Uh, and the uh, pressure is 0 0.03 and 0 0.05. Uh, LED is off, and I am in Kinderton. And uh, I confirm that LED is off now, and I'm setting the five minute timer. Copy. 4.45. Copy. The timer is. Set up now. Set it now. The current pressure reading is 264. This is Kate. Current and vent pressure gauge reading is 292. Copy Kate. 292. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, hatch again closed its module and a partial repressurization of the module underway by Rizhikov and Kudzferchkov being monitored on the other side of the uh, 
POISC service module interface by NASA flight engineer Kate Rubens. Once uh, a final leak check is conducted, the uh, POISC will be depressurized back down to vacuum one more time and the hatch reopened to enable Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to move outside to begin their work for the day. The actual start time for the spacewalk uh, was 9.12 a.m. Central, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time at the point at which the hatch was opened for the first time. Two minutes are up. We, uh, module pressure is almost 264, or to be more uh, precise, 263.5, but closer to 264. Copy. Station Moscow, uh, MRM2 pressure reading, Sergey, could you please uh, report it? Four minutes have passed, the pressure is the same. Two, six, three point five, uh, same pressure. All of this work uh, being conducted by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to uh, make sure that the seals are around the circumference of the Poisk airlock hatch and the airlock itself to make sure pressure is holding the way it should be is all designed uh, to confirm that the airlock is good to go uh, for future Russian spacewalks. As it uh, begins the process of replacing the pier's docking compartment as the venue for, from which Russian spacewalks will be conducted until the delivery of the Nyoka multipurpose laboratory module next year, which will uh, be installed on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station after Piers is detached and disposed of in the Pacific Ocean by a visiting Progress cargo ship. Copy. Preliminary MRM2 leak check. Uh, it's in work. Copy. So we are standing by. So the, the current pressure is 263.5. Uh, so, so it should not be um, uh, decrease of uh, not more than two millimeters. So we are standing by for that. Yes. Copy that. Kate copies.
While this uh, work is ongoing uh, in advance of Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov floating outside to begin their EVA work for the day, Kate Rubens has been monitoring activities uh, in the Russian segment of the station. She helped Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov suit up earlier this morning, and she will help them uh, out of their suits later today when the spacewalk is completed. The four uh, astronauts who arrived on Monday night aboard the Crew Dragon Resilience following its launch on Sunday from the Kennedy Space Center atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. They're uh, in the process of conducting scientific experiments, some early utilization, and transferring equipment and uh, flight data files from Dragon over to the International Space Station for their six-month mission as part of the Expedition 64 crew. You see from left to right, Kate Rubens, Victor Glover, Soichi Noguchi, Sergei Ryzhikov, Mike Hopkins, Shannon Walker, and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. Sergey, one. So could you please tell the MV pressure on MRM2? Two six three point five. Uh, it is stable. No delta T. Uh, that sounds good. Copy. Proceed. Proceed monitoring. Yes, we still have two uh, point half minutes left. We confirm. EV1, could you please hold this? I will try to tie this up. Everything is fine. Once outside of the uh, Poisk airlock, Kud Sverchkov will be first out, actually. He uh, will once again uh, check the uh, seals around uh, the airlock hatch to this newly employed uh, more Russian-based spacewalks. He'll install a protective ring around uh, the hatchway uh, to make sure that it doesn't incur any damage from any uh, micrometeoroid uh, particles uh, during the course of the uh, excursion that's expected to last up to six hours in duration. Ryzhikov will follow him outside, uh, carrying an airtight container, within which is a brand new uh, piece of hardware called a fluid flow regulator that uh, he and Kud Sverchkov will install uh, on the Zarya module to replace an older unit. This uh, piece of hardware uh, will do just what the name suggests and uh, regulate the flow of fluids through the plumbing on the Zarya module, the first component ever launched of the International Space Station, two days shy of its 22nd anniversary of that launch on a Proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, November 20th, 1998. 263.5 is the reading. 263.5 copy. That sounds good. As you saw in that graphic just a moment ago, uh, once outside, uh, you'll identify Ryzhikov. Uh, Get ready. He's wearing the Orlon suit with the red stripes as EV-1, or extravehicular crew member number one, the ISS commander for Expedition 64. He also will have a helmet camera bearing the number 20 that you'll see on your screen uh, when we get views 
uh, through uh, the helmet cams that will be worn by the two spacewalkers. Could Sverchkov, EV2, will be wearing the Orlon suit with the blue stripes. His helmet camera is number 18. This is the first spacewalk for both cosmonauts. So the EV hatch is tight, so we will depress now from MRM2, MRM2 depress, and in Q part 6, uh, you will perform the following actions. You will have to control BSS EV uh, position. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, Position is EV position and TSDS door should be open. Also, uh, control the LED on the display, and after that, you will have to open TSDS two manually and uh, depress. After that, so the injector should not be activated, right? Inaudible. So as the SO depress valve is open manually. As the SO is open, I can confirm that because LED is illuminated on the panel. Final leak checks uh, of the uh, Poisk module hatch uh, being conducted uh, before it is depressurized back down to vacuum one final time uh, to enable the hatch to be opened. Uh, allowing Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to float outside. EV2 as well. EV210 in the module. Pressure reading. Could you please report uh, module pressure and spacesuit pressure? Copy. Will do. 190 is in the module. 015 for EV1, 015 is for EV2. Copy. Kate, how do you copy? Uh, this is Mitri regarding the depressed repress procedure. You know, you know there are some noises, interference. So 150 in the new module. Uh, the pressure reading. Yes, I can confirm we have some interference. Kate, uh, how do you copy me? I copy you. Uh, not, not so good, but I can copy you. Kate? We will have to equalize pressure between FGB and PHO. So KVD SM should be in the open position. You should be placed in the open position. Copy. KVD PGL SM in the uh, open position. It is in work. Copy. We are standing by for your report on that, Kate. 100 millimeters is the module pressure. 023 is the space suit pressure. Copy. 026. Inaudible. SM valve is open. Copy. Now, please equalize the pressure between FGB and PSO Kate. Copy in work. EV1 and EV2, space suit pressure readings, please. And in the module as well. 75 is in the module, 029 for EV1. Okay, 75 is in the module, 029 is in the space suit. Copy.
Подходит давление 50. Module pressure is 5-0-0-31 is the space suit pressure for EV-1. Same for EV-2, copy. The module pressure is 35.35 and the space suit 0.34. Heading down to vacuum one more time. The Poisk module uh, is performing as advertised and uh, good spacesuits reported by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. When we reach 12 millimeters, we confirm. This is Kate, unintelligible. Kate, you know, we did not copy your last. Could you please repeat PHO MV pressure reading? It is increasing. Seven two four is the current pressure and it is still increasing. Seven two four PHO pressure. What about FGB pressure, Kate? It is being equalized. In FGB, the current pressure is 733. Copy 733, Kate. Continue to equalize the pressure, Kate. Copy in work. And as you can hear, uh, the Russian flight controllers through the interpreter talking to Kate Rubens in the Russian segment of the International Space Station as she works to equalize pressure between Poisk and the uh, different uh, modules on the Russian side of the International Space Station, the precursor uh, to Poisk going down to vacuum, enabling uh, Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov to open the hatch of one final time uh, to begin... Uh, the process of moving outside with their tools for the start of the tasks associated with today's excursion. Module pressure is 12 millimeters and I'm ready to close as the two valves and KSD SO as well. If it's a go to close KSD and KSD SO, well, KSD 2 is closed, Moscow copy, and I'm closing KSD SO valve. No. On uh, the EV panel MRM2, the LED should not be illuminated. Yes, the, the, it is not illuminated. Copy, sounds good. It is 11 uh, millimeters, uh, actually, the pressure reading. Sounds good. Sergey. So please proceed. You card 7, step 14, and you will start performing the step on my go. Copy. Q card number seven. Kate, what is MV PSO pressure and also FGB pressure? Reading? PSO MV 731. 731. 731 in FGO as well. Copy. So, do I say it correctly that the pressure has been equalized? Yes. 
Yes, unfortunately, I cannot uh, copy you very well. So now the valve and pagoda SM should be transitioned to electrical control case. Kabarde pagoda SM valve should be in position in position of electrical control. Copy, Kate. It is in electrical position. Uh, ED1, are you ready to work step 14? Or? Yes, we are. So we are starting transition of the spacesuit to autonomous power. Copy. The temperature control health should be trans transitioned to uh, to position six. Preliminary Orlan cool down. EV1 in position six. Cosmonauts is about to switch their Orlan suits to internal battery power. Again, a Russian spacewalk measured uh, from the time of hatch open to hatch close, unlike a U.S. spacewalk that is measured from battery power on on U.S. extravehicular mobility units in the Quest airlock to airlock repress at the end of the spacewalk. On the display, you should have the message uh, PO2 prime. We cannot copy you, Moscow. So what is the primary bottle, O2 bottle pressure? 415, inaudible. Uh, and what about? Uh, are they reading uh, 22.5, inaudible? Copy. Now, BSS should be in the position closed. Copy. What about the... Covering uh, online fluid umbilical, uh, yes, after it is in the closed position, it will have to be capped. Copy. So O2 uh, is in the position closed. What about the suit gauge pressure? 036 for EV1, 036 for EV2 is the space suit pressure. So can you see PO2 primary in your, on your display? Come again. The primary O2 bottle pressure, can you see it on your display? 415 for EV1 and uh, 41 inaudible for EV2. Copy. Now you can cap uh, the umbilicals and uh, also work with the MLI uh, lab. Copy in work. Sergey, could you please hold the cue cards here? Yes, give them to me. Try not uh, to snag on anything. Uh, good luck, guys. Thank you so much, Kate. So the um, umbilicals are kept, uh, and um, the electrical controllers of Berlin covered with MLI. Copy. Now you will have the go to egress very soon. 
Все, значит, вы сейчас с Артемом открываете его. So Artem will support you in opening the EVS hatch, and after that uh, we will continue to transition to autonomous after the hatch is open. And uh, so we should not uh, stow away the cue cards as yet. Yes, that's that's a firm. Keep them close. Ну, ребят, здравствуйте еще раз. Guys, давайте будем открывать люк повторно. Now we will uh, reopen the hatch. We will open it once again for the second time. Copy. So we will try to position ourselves uh, comfortably. Now uh, use the hatch tool and uh, uh, place it in the working position. In work. The flag is in the work position, 19 degrees is the angle of the hatch to 90. Now put it on onto the uh, pin of the drive of the hatch, copy. Now so 11 years after its launch to the International Space Station, the Poisk module now being used as the spacewalking airlock for the first time as Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov check out their tools and tethers about to open up uh, the airlock hatch for a second time that uh, will enable them to float outside to begin their work. The rollers are moving. Copy. Then the pusher handle uh, should be pulled on uh, towards yourself. Yes, and we are leaving the hatch to here. Yes, so uh, the pusher is being pulled towards us until hard stop. Copy. Okay. Can I start moving the hatch? What about the pressure? Is it down completely? Is it vacuum now? Yes, zero. Copy, now you can open the hatch. Yeah, please retain the handle, hold the handle of the pusher and open the hatch. Hold that handle. Can you do it uh, simultaneously, EV2? No, Joy. Okay, so I will hold it here from this side. I'm tightening it. And get ready. And uh, the hatch uh, to the Poisk airlock once again open. And uh, we should be seeing Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov here any moment. Ryzhikov again will be wearing the Orlan suit with the red stripes as EV-1. Kud Sverchkov's Orlan suit will bear the blue stripes. Stand by Y1, uh, let me reposition myself. You know, uh, I have to put it back because uh, there is a king here. Copy. Okay, now. So we are removing this slack now. Copy. So the EV hatch is open and secured uh, with the uh, hook uh, page 201. Install the protective ring, guys. Copy in work. Installing protective ring. So I am staying here, EV2, and you go ahead. Inaudible. Так, 
Сколько? У нас хватит длины, Кирилл? Yeah. У нас хватит длины. Uh, will there be sufficient length here for us? Well, let's see. Well, you know, um, just stop doing that. Uh, I will use a, a different way of operating. So when you install uh, the protective ring, uh, please monitor that the cord uh, is not in the um, patch opening. Yes, we know that. So let us do it once again. This is enough. Maybe this is the way, the best way to do it. Okay, the locks are open. The ledgers are open. I confirm. Now, I have this mark right before me. I pressed it down. Now, I have it uh, transferred to this position and secured. That's it. You know, there is probably a uh, longitude groove. Yes, I, I will test it right now. Now, yes, it is secured. The uh, hooks are secured. Artem, how did you copy? The protective ring is installed. The protective ring is installed. So Dima will support you from now on. Сергей, we are transitioning into independent autonomous power for the suits, and that's going to be cue card 7 and step 16. The cosmonauts have installed that uh, protective ring uh, around the circumference of the Poisk airlock hatch. That is a common procedure to make sure it is uh, pristine uh, for the duration of the spacewalk. And uh, we should be seeing the two cosmonauts outside any moment now. Could Sverchkov will be first out of the hatch, followed by Ryzhikov. Power supply in autonomous power. And um, please deactivate primary pump. And then please put the transmitter in the off position. All right, we have everything, transmitters, pump and fan are in required status for EV1 and EV2. So, just wanted to make sure that you have, uh, for EV2, for Sergei 2, uh, that your uh, primary pump, fan, and transmitter are on. What is the U battery? 27.8. And 20 unintelligible for the second for EV2. And then please deactivate the tow mode on the um, control panel in MRM2. Copy in work. And 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 power, put it in the off position for the first and for the second. All right, I am putting. Suit one in autonomous power. 
And I'm standing by verifying the light. Uh, the LED is no longer illuminated. Uh, is the umbilical still connected? It is still um, connected. So disconnect the umbilical. Copy and work. The umbilical, umbilical has been disconnected. All right, electrical umbilical is disconnected. Uh, do you read me well? Um, you come, uh, we do, just a little bit quiet. So, for suit one and suit two, please power them, disconnect them from station power. All right. We are disconnecting them and then. So, first, you need to deactivate so it exchange power. And then, suit one and two should be put in off position. In work for the first suit. And the umbilical is has been disconnected for suit two. Do you read me well? Yes. Uh, so please uh, close out the connectors for the Orlan suits with MLI. Um, done for the for suit for EV1 and for EV2. Copy, and then once uh, the TV hatch is open, uh, we will give you a go to activate sublimators. All right, we open the EV hatch, and it has been secured. Copy, I am passing you on to Artyom. Copy. All right, guys, are you ready to go? EV2 goes to MRM2 SM handrail. And what about the sublimators? It's going to be on our go a little bit later. Copy. Hey, see it? Guys? We are going to be out of orbital night in a few seconds, and you will be able to see well. And so for sublimators, please start with suit one and then uh, proceed with suit two. Well, Sergei is only halfway out through the hatch. So what time do we turn on the sublimators? If you have... Our first view of uh, Sergei Kud Sverchkov uh, exiting the Poisk module airlock, the first time this has been used for a Russian spacewalk. Kud Sverchkov and uh, Sergei Ryzhikov, who will follow him momentarily, both conducting the first spacewalks of their careers we're now 54 minutes into the spacewalk that began at 9.12 a.m. Central, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time, with the opening of the hatch to the Poisk module for the first time after a series of leak checks and uh, validation tests on the integrity of the seals around this airlock being used for the first time for an EVA. Well, congratulations. You are out. So I am outside as well, connected to the handrail, and I am putting my sublimator in the, I'm activating my sublimator. So for EV2 as well, right? Yes. So TO indicated TO is in off position. and. Temperature control handle is in position three. We copy. All right. So EV one 
Temperature control handle is in position six, and now I'm putting it in position three. Let's just give a few seconds to for Sergei to situate himself. And then I have the filter. Okay, we are standing by. Flying 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean, the International Space Station uh, moving into an orbital sunrise, moving from northwest to southeast on this orbit of the Earth. Sergei Kodesverchkov outside of the Poisk airlock, soon to be joined by Sergei Rizhikov, who will hand him a, uh, a package of hardware containing a new fluid flow regulator for the Zarya module, the first component ever launched for the International Space Station 22 years ago this coming Friday. All right, and let me unreal it here. All right, there we go. Don't pull yet. And the airtight container have been secured. Does that look good to you for you? Yes. And one hook. Both cosmonauts now outside. Uh, they're working with this so-called airtight container that includes uh, the new uh, fluid regulator. Uh, for the uh, Zarya module that will replace an older unit. That's the first task on tap for the two cosmonauts now that they have uh, confirmed the integrity of the Poisk module through a series of depressurization and repressurization exercises and leak checks of all of the hardware for that uh, airlock in use today for the first time. Just be careful. secured it. I have secured two. Could you hold it for a second? Let me move away a little bit. Okay. I'm moving. Careful. I'm getting that short hoop. Sergey, one, as far as I understand, you are egressing MRM, right? That's right. And what about the kit? It's on the opposite side. And I am there as well. Okay, so there is enough space for you, right? I can't see right now, but I think um, it's, the space is sufficient. Okay, we'll be standing by for um, Sergei one report once you are out of the MRM. Hi. Okay. The hook is in my pocket there. And 
Is it getting out? Nope. Fighting? I'll try and rotate it a little bit. Сергей, one, and Сергей, two. When you get a chance, you can uh, put the heat exchanger handle in the position zero, and then put the neutral, neutral position. And if you can actually set the heating. Uh, I'm holding the container right now, so... Okay, I got it out. It's really not being cooperative. All right. I think my long one is headed in the same direction as yours. Could you please connect that um, hook from the kit to um, under your right arm, a little bit closer to the handrail? Done. All right. I have secured the adjustable tether to the handrail for EV1. Resting. Okay. And the sun is out. You need to probably set it to half. Is everything looking good on your side? Yes. EV2 is out. EV1 is out. We copy. All right, guys. You can take a break, just orient yourself in regards to the modules, where to go, how to proceed, and we can start the translation on your go. Copy. Right. We are just as we have planned. We see that. Sergey, do you have the flow control valve adjustment? Done. Is ISR on? Well, I'm putting the warm cold handle in position six. Gennady Mihalovich, do we have your go? All right, just put the handle at zero first. Please verify temperature control handle at zero. Please verify that you are in mid position uh, for the switch between warm and cold. And you have a go to act, to perform the flow control valve adjustment. Done. We copy. Sergey, I'm going to take it over. Sounds good.
Jill. I got it. And I hand it over. And I'm putting the uh, warm cold switch to cold and then to mid position. And the flow control valve adjustment is in position two. We copy. I am ready. All right, we are ready for translation. Great. At the bottom of your screen, uh, with the backpack and the red stripes, is Station Commander Sergei Rizhikov. Just above him is Sergei Kud Sverchkov. They have uh, all of their tools together. Their suits are configured properly, and they're about to make their way over to the Zarya module, just a few feet away, to start uh, the replacement of an aging a piece of hardware called a fluid flow regulator that enables uh, all of the plumbing uh, to operate properly inside the Zarya module. I am catching it here. What? The container. All right, the adjustable rod is connected to handrail 6011. We copy. And um, the regular tether to 6023. Do you see me? Uh, do you see my back? Uh, can I fit there? Yes. I can see it, and you fit just fine. Okay, adjustable. Tether is connected to 6013. All right, here is it. Watch out for the tether. I see it. I'm going to move it. So 60-12 is where I have my tether. Let me get a little bit closer. Can you reach it? I should. I have to. Just move cautiously. Are you going to move the tether for the container? I will. And our first helmet camera view uh, from Sergei Kud Sverchkov, uh, the number 18 in the lower right hand uh, corner of your screen, as he uh, begins uh, the process of making his way over to the Zarya module. He's being joined by Sergei Ryzhikov. Uh, we're still waiting on his helmet camera to be activated. Uh, that uh, will bear the number 20 in the lower right hand corner as they. Uh, will conduct the first of the tasks for today's spacewalk, that being the replacement of a fluid flow regulator for the Zarya module. So hi. One hour, 10 minutes into today's spacewalk that is expected to last up to six hours. The container is here, right? Yes. Okay, now let's go to the handrails, and I'm moving as close as possible to you, okay? And I'm monitoring the 
situation. So this transit bay, it should be below me. Yes, this bay, transit bay, that's where it should be. And BPDO should be above you. We do see it out of the corner of my eye. Well, you do, not me. Okay, I can see it a little bit. And as you are translating, please make sure you don't get your um, tethers tied up. Okay, I have moved my hooks and I'm working with the container now. Just a little bit. All right, there was a 20 seconds dropout. We're in the process of handing over uh, downlink video communications capability uh, between satellites on the uh, tracking and data relay satellite system. Uh, Sergey uh, Ryzhikov and Sergey Kudsverchkov moving a container over from the Poisk airlock to the um, Zarya module. Uh, that contains a brand new uh, fluid uh, flow device that will improve uh, the flow of uh, hydraulic uh, fluid and other uh, plumbing components uh, within that module, the first module ever launched for the International Space Station 22 years ago this coming Friday. And a good view of Poisk on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station, launched uh, on November 10th, 2009, 11 years ago, having served up to this point as a docking port for visiting Russian vehicles, and today for the first time serving as a uh, venue from which a spacewalk is being conducted. You can see off on the left side of Poisk, uh, wearing uh, the suit with the red stripes, Kud Sverchkov is out of view at this moment. And now EV2, EV2 camera off, and now camera on. The LED is not illuminated. And Reba only has one light on. Let me try it one more time. Let me cycle. Okay, so two lights are on, but the camera uh, LED uh, is not green. I press the button one more time, and now it is illuminated. We copy. So, what lights are we talking about? U.S. lights or Orlan lights? U.S. lights. Well, you have a go to activate Orlan lights too. And Sergey, please verify that the handle is uh, secured correctly. With a pin? With a pin? The, hand, the handles are for, for your backpack are secured correctly to the pin. Uh, we are um, 
not we're not seeing correct telemetry. Okay, I had it, added it, and it should be in the correct position. Okay, we see that it is closed now in telemetry. Did you see whether it was um, coming away? Um, I did, and it wasn't. Okay, now we're getting the right telemetry. Thank you. All right, uh, so the long one is attached to 6009. Uh, Sergey, could you please move the uh, kit hook to make sure that I don't have to reach two times? Okay, yes, we'll do. Okay, stand by, wait. Excellent. Got it. It is secured now. 1614 is, and I'm moving now, pulling it up so you can reach. Okay, so wait. Should I move over the, the tether? Which one? Okay, okay, let's go ahead and try doing that. Okay, let's do it during the next uh, transfer. Okay, so I'm holding it, giving it to you. I'm next to uh, uh, Sergey, and we're monitoring you. And Sergey, one, did you cycle the camera? Okay, I didn't do that. I forgot about it because we started working on the handle. Okay, well, I'll do it now when Sergey moves over here. Yes. Had a good view of uh, the Russian segment of the International Space Station, uh, prominently in the center of the view, the Poisk module, uh, and on the left of it. Sergei Ryzhikov, the space station commander. Sergei Kud Sverchkov uh, next to him. That long pole that you see attached to the Poisk module is the Strela boom, Strela being the Russian word for arrow, a telescoping boom that uh, the cosmonauts use to move uh, from one segment of the work sites around the Russian segment to another. Your screen, the ISS Progress 75 cargo ship. Uh, attached to the aft port of the Zvezda service module and will remain attached to that until the mid-February time frame. I didn't see it when you turned it on, I guess. It blinked in a way. Okay, so can you see it now? I don't think it's illuminated. Moscow. Could you please confirm? Are you getting the video? No, we uh, do not have the video right now. What about video two? No, there is no WVS. Uh, uh, we only see the image that we're getting from the arm. Uh, okay, so the green one is illuminated. Yeah, Correct, yes, and mine is illuminated too. Okay, so let's move on. Yes, let's move on now. Let's not spend time on it now. We are seeing you through the camera on the arm. So you can proceed now, and then uh, we can get back to the camera up later. Okay, copy. So I'm uh, securing to the shortcut handrail. Okay, excellent. Sixty-one, sixteen. The, the kit goes there as well. I'm holding it. Okay, I'm handing it over to you. EV2, uh, 6015. A short one. I don't, see, I don't see its number. 6005. Okay, yes. 
and the uh, uh, kit hook is also installed on 6015, holding the kit, okay? And it is over, so I'm going to inspect this area. I don't think there should be anything in the way. Uh, as far as I remember it, yes, uh, there is sufficient room here. And I'm, re uh, I'm getting to a different shortcut handrail. Moving the kit over there, uh, moving along the handrail. Copy. No. Are you are you holding it? And I handed it over. I'm going. I'm going to move it up just to make sure that it's more convenient for you. Okay. It's pre the, the hooks are now secured. And the kit uh, is rehooked now as well. And I'm proceeding with translation. Okay, so move closer then. Okay, excellent. And I can uh, uh, move it over here. Okay, are you holding it? Yes. Is it towards me? No. Uh, and we're getting the uh, WVS video of EV2 copy. And also we're getting the view from the arm. It is the hook now, and the hook is... Uh, a good view of uh, Sergei Ryzhikov uh, working uh, to configure uh, equipment outside of the Poisk module airlock. Uh, right alongside of him is the uh, airtight container, as uh, it is called by the Russian specialists, within which uh, a brand new uh, fluid flow regulator, uh, which will be installed on the Zarya module shortly. And a helmet camera view from Sergei Kudsverchkov of the work uh, that he is conducting. And I'm moving over. Copy, copy. And uh, we can see you. Okay, got a bit too far. Do not rush. The International Space Station flying 260 miles over the South Atlantic, just off the east coast of Argentina. This orbit of the Earth carrying uh, 
the orbital outpost and its seven crew members from southwest to northeast on a track that will cross the western coast of Africa a short time from now. Okay, I got it. You got it? Yes. Sergey Ryzhikov is uh, hovering right next to uh, the Zarya module. Uh, that's where this fluid flow regulator replacement work will be conducted a short time from now. That uh, module launched on a proton rocket on November 20th, 1998, 22 years ago this coming Friday, the first element of the International Space Station. The kit is secured to, to the flexible handrail, copy, and we can see it as well. My lawn tether is uh, also on the soft handrail. The short one is installed on the uh, soft handrail. So you're holding it, yes, correct. It's on, on the second one, right? Yes, of course. Now I'll have to uh, hold on to the other uh, soft handrail. Sergey, can you move over? I guess I can rehook it now, and then you will be translating along the flexible handrails. Yes, that's what I thought too and I'm monitoring. Okay, so let me move back a bit to not be in the way. Both hooks are now secured. And uh, I really have to watch my body position uh, in the space because uh, I get swinging back and forth. Well, I need to make sure that I don't mix them up. And there are different colors and barcodes. Okay, the hook is now secured. In Okay, tethered, copy. And let me reach towards the kit. I'm holding it. Copy, copy, you're holding it. Turn it a bit. Let me grab onto the other end. Uh, you're going to get this from me because I'll have to move back by a few degrees. Okay, are you holding it? Yes, holding it. Can you try catching it now? Okay, excellent. And now I have to move over. Okay, let me do that. Stand by. Uh, yes, it's quite dusty here. I'm translating along the soft handrails. Okay, so I guess I will have to hold on to the flexible or soft handrails. Uh, so let me, let, let me do this. I'm at a maximum here, and I'm secured quite well. Okay. Are you holding it? Yes, I'm holding it. Okay, so I'm handing it over to you. Yes.
ребят, наблюдаем картинку с обеих ваших камер. Both cooks uh, are now installed, and I will proceed with uh, the kit operations. The kit is now secured and tethered. Copy. Yeah. I'm holding it. Okay, I'm handing it over to you. Uh, inaudible. Switch into the handrail. 13, and I guess it's 50, it's not clear. Moving the kit over. The kit is now transferred. Copy. A bit over here. Okay, that's great. And the small hook is now installed to moving closer to you, and I am holding the kit. Okay, copy. So let me look around. So this is the panel that we need, and this is the uh, platform. I'm not going to rehook the large Artem, uh, it's uh, uh, hot uh, here since uh, I store automatic thermal control system is on. Can I move the handle to... This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 33 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk, which also saw the uh, verification of the uh, ability of the Poisk module to support... Uh, a spacewalk for the first time, a great view here uh, from uh, an external camera on the International Space Station of the two cosmonauts, Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov, now uh, working on top of the Zarya module, the first element of the International Space Station launched 22 years ago. The container in between the two holds a new fluid flow regulator that uh, will replace an aging unit. Uh, to uh, do just what it uh, implies, uh, regulate the flow of fluids in the plumbing of uh, the Zarya module that uh, essentially connects the U.S. and Russian segments of the U.S. of the International Space Station. And a split-screen view of the two helmet cameras uh, on the cosmonauts. Uh, okay, well, the automatic system is on now, and what we have is the switches. Can we use that? So, as their automatic system. Sergei Kud Sverchkov's helmet camera is on the left, Sergei Ryzhikov's helmet camera on the right, as they work in tandem uh, to position themselves for the installation of this new uh, fluid regulator unit. I um, see thermal control system is off, moving to six to four. Okay, so it's going to be like this, or moved now. Okay, no. So I wanted to move farther, but I guess it would be better to be here and to do one more.
свои перекупил. I have rehooked my scissors and the kit has been uh, re-scissored as well. I I'm now closer to the platform, okay? And I'm uh, holding it now. Copy, handing it over. Okay, stand by. And the While uh, the two cosmonauts are working uh, on the first uh, task of today's spacewalk, uh, the installation of this fluid uh, regulator unit in the Zarya module, uh, it is reported that uh, the Resilience Crew Dragon that carried uh, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Soichi Noguchi to the International Space Station for its docking uh, late Monday night is now configured for what are known as quiescent operations, steady state operations at the International Space Station. Uh, it automatically docked to the forward port of the Harmony module late Monday night. The uh, four new residents uh, comprising uh, the addition to the Expedition 64 crew on board. They have spent the day transferring uh, cargo and uh, flight data files, uh, placing a Crew Dragon in the proper configuration for its six-month stay as a part of the International Space Station. I'm at my workstation monitoring the kit position. It's an excellent uh, position right now. And and I'm holding it. Okay. And uh, Artem, inaudible, should we keep it here? Did you say uh, there are bars? Uh, uh, no, uh, no, uh, wire ties. Can you can you see them on, on the video? Uh, well, okay, then you can keep them there. Put the latches in the uh, operating position. They are in a present position now. Copy. And uh, you're going to install the pressurized uh, container on its uh, platform. Okay. Stand by, and I'll have to change the other position as well. Okay, it's uh, convenient now. And we'll proceed. I see the antenna here. I'm ready. Okay, so we'll keep going, move closer. I'm holding it. Okay, excellent. So let me uh, move closer to you. There is no digital numbering here, and I will use the color code. Two yellow ones on the side of uh, Sergei on plane to OK copy. So one four should be on your side. And the fact that there is no uh, label in there, that's fine. That's how it's been for a while now. OK, move just a bit over here. OK, like that. And they're in on my side and on my side as well. Soft dock is confirmed. Copy. And please put the latches in closed position. Number four is closed. Number one is closed. Okay. Okay. Everything is fine. Copy. And uh, we can uh, open the case that yes, copy. And uh, who is going to do that? EV1 or 2? Let me do that. Is it more convenient for you? Well, I, I guess I can do that with my right hand. Okay, so you are doing it, right? Please make two turns to open KSD. Copy.
Сергей второй, тогда uh, Сергей two. Разъем. So check out the connector for now and to turn the complete uh, the connector next to handrail 1360. Сергей первый принято. On uh, uh, above the panel. So this is the metal uh, connector. I can see it. It's open now. And guys, I have a question. On the timeline, we were supposed to take a break. So do you need a break or should we continue? Well, uh, we can take a break for, for one minute or uh, we can proceed with, if we don't need to rush. Okay, then, and please take a break. Then, and once you're ready, we will proceed. Okay. The uh, Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow uh, conferring with our two spacewalkers, Sergei Ryzhikov on the left, Sergei Kod Sverchkov on the right, and that uh, cylindrical container is the so-called airtight container housing a replacement uh, fluid regulator unit that will be installed in the Zarya module, uh, which they are working at. That's the uh, first element of the International Space Station launched 22 years ago this coming Friday. The two uh, cosmonauts uh, successfully tested uh, the uh, Poisk airlock for use for future Russian spacewalks. Uh, that uh, checked out in great shape. Uh, the crew is running a few minutes behind the timeline uh, for the day. Uh, and a good view now uh, from the helmet camera of Sergei Ryzhikov, the Expedition 64 commander, as he and uh, Kud Sverchkov prepare to, to remove this new replacement door from the container for its installation in Zarya. Of that area, and it would be great to see it. We're now one hour, 43 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Other tasks on the docket will be the uh, disconnection of a telemetry antenna uh, that links uh, the Zvezda service module to the pier's docking compartment and its attachment uh, to the uh, interface between Zvezda and the Poisk module that begins uh, the uh, lengthy days of work uh, over the next uh, several months to decommission the pier's docking compartment for its uh, removal and disposal uh, via a Progress spacecraft next year that will clear the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment for the installation of the new Naoka uh, Mini uh, Multipurpose Laboratory module that will be launched next year on a Proton rocket uh, for its installation uh, as a laboratory an airlock and a docking port all in one uh, that uh, launch uh, to uh, take place uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, a launch date yet to be determined. Okay, it is off on my side. No, it is still falling down. Okay, I don't want you to push it here. Uh, is it still on? Well, yes, let's uh, make sure that it goes off. Okay, two minutes are up. And we are ready to continue. Copy. If uh, you got a chance to rest and if you're ready, then uh, you can go ahead and start demating the connectors of RG SP K1. And please uh, provide commentary on uh, what you are doing. I can see the connector. It is on the Lirker clip, uh, the metal connector, one out of the three connectors. Copy. And do you see any labels? Labels uh, on the connector car RRG. Car RRG, that's the marking. Just one marking there. Okay, copy. And the cable is going between the first one and I guess the next one. That's where it's going. 
Okay, so go ahead and demate it now with your goal. Yes. Okay, so the cable S says SPR RRG H1. Okay, I guess that's uh, the one that we need. Yes, that's correct. And your go ahead, go ahead and demate it. Demating the cable, and I do not see any pod or debris. Copy. And let me uh, secure the panel. Uh -huh. The two cosmonauts are now uh, removing uh, the new fluid regulator unit from that container, temporarily stowing it uh, before they begin to uh, unmate a series of connectors holding the older fluid regulator unit in place uh, that has been there since it, uh, the uh, Zarya module was launched 22 years ago. This brand new unit uh, will improve uh, the flow of fluids uh, through the plumbing system of the Zarya module. We are now uh, one hour, 47 minutes into today's spacewalk. The length is not enough. You know, the, the length is not enough. Of course, during the training drills, we had uh, the handrails on the cover, and here we don't have this handrail, so we'll have to switch tethers. Copy. You can use the uh, adjustable of tethers. Yes, we are working with them. Yes, so uh, you can rehook it. Sergey, you have cut out uh, from uh, from your kit, from your toolkit. Yes, I can see that. Thank you. Sergey, will you try that? Because I don't have uh, the enough length. Okay, the one, the connector that on the container, you know, you don't have to just transfer it, move it. Can you hold it? Yeah, I've secured it here. Copy. I secured the old, the old one. Flow regulator. Now uh, work with MLI. Yes, I can see that. The so MLI flap is open. Now move this ring clip here. So we are uh, sewing the cable. Can you hold it? Copy. No, uh, re retrieve it. It should be in the center. It is more convenient for me here. Yes, go close it here. Yes, it is closed. The cable is uh, stowed. We are ready to open uh, the handle here. Go ahead. Be careful. And please look for any uh, any drops of moisture. Beware of that, uh, okay? Yes, we will have to move with it later on. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I closed it. I opened it. Remembering that I cannot see the cable. There are no drops, no moisture. Copy. Yeah, there's a little bit of the connector. Is a, There is a little bit of moisture on the connector. I am not looking at the connector. I cannot see it here, EV2. 
Yes, yes, and now TV2, you should uh, monitor the panel, right? Yes, and TV1, yes, TV1, can you use GoPro camera and take pictures of that? The, the connectors that are on the module itself, correct? Yes. Or the connectors on the panel itself, on the unit. Okay, GoPro camera is activated, and I'm uh, taking videos. So in four minutes, we will have eclipse. So the camera is off OFF now. The camera is off. I am retrieving it to, to its location. Putting it back. Now, can we move the panel? Yes, start securing the panel, guys. You know, I, uh, One hour, 52 minutes into the spacewalk, uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, continue to demate connectors in the replacement of a fluid uh, regulator component uh, on the Zarya module, the first uh, task of today's spacewalk, which also featured the validation of the Poisk uh, module as an airlock for today's spacewalk and uh, those to be conducted out of the Russian segment in the future until the arrival of the Nauka multipurpose laboratory module to be launched next year from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The International Space Station is uh, about to cross uh, the northern coast of Africa over Libya, soon to pass over the Mediterranean, no, no, no. and then over Greece, just south of Athens. You know, there is the wire inside the wire, total. That's why it was very hard to pull aside. I am holding it. It's great. Three knots here. Now we will have actually to secure the new panel. Okay, so I release the old tether, correct? What tether are you talking about? No, no, not yet. We have one more tether, and we will secure it. Okay, don't, don't, don't release it yet. No, we need two points of uh, uh, contact, so to say. Yep. Yes, I have released. It's here. You know, Sergey, you can actually um, hook the readjustable tether uh, to the handrail of the container so it is not uh, in the way for you. So which one tether you're talking about? Which one adjustable? EV1. You have adjustable tether that you are holding with your left hand. You can secure it uh, to the uh, airtight com container uh, hand uh, handrail on the upper or on the lateral one. Yes, I, I have uh, secured it there. It is a new one. Uh, we will have use of it later. The panel should be secured with a tether, guys. You're in the wrong configuration. And the second contact point should be inaudible. Now you can let the tether go. It will be just uh, connected with a wire. The panel should be on the wire and on the tether, guys. There should be two... Uh, points of uh, contact there. 
Unintelligible. I am ready to open this cover. Moscow, is it a go to open the cover? Yes, uh, you can open the door of the airtight container. Copy in work. One lock is open. The other lock is open. So one is open. Both locks are open. Okay, it's to go to open the door of the airtight container. Unintelligible. Yeah, let's open the door. It wouldn't budge. But the locks are off, correct? Yes, the, the is off. The latch is open. Well, maybe it is the bolt is still holding it. On my side, uh, they are free. I suggest. Sergey, inaudible. Guys. Guys. Look, along the perimeter of the door, That's Moscow, how do you copy us, ED1? Uh, guys, there are a few bolts along the perimeter. Please check that they all are they, they're all free. Unintelligible. What kind of uh, head size is needed here? Let me check. Guys. Go ahead, Moscow. The bolts on the flange are not unscrewed, right? They are still screwed in. Yes, they are still screwed in. So we will have a short form drop out very soon.
Guys, how do you copy us on the ground? Yeah. We copy you loud and clear. So on the door of the airtight container, there are 17. This is Mission Control Houston, having passed the two-hour, one-minute mark into uh, today's spacewalk. Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov continue work uh, to install a replacement uh, fluid regulator unit on the Zarya module of the International Space Station. Uh, today's spacewalk also uh, accomplished the validation of the Poisk uh, module as an airlock for future Russian spacewalks through a uh, successful depressurization, repressurization, and uh, leak check on the hatch uh, for the airlock portion of the Poisk module. That uh, leak check, uh, you see the series of steps that were uh, conducted earlier today. The spacewalk actually uh, getting underway at 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time, with the initial opening of the hatch to Poisk. Unintelligible. EV2, Moscow, you know, in your liquid uh, garment, temperature is only 12. So what is the position of your uh, temperature controller? Maybe you should place it in position zero or maybe one. One will be better probably.
Киеве, Киев, Москва. Давай включим опять АСТР. Okay. Letter deactivate АСТР. Вот тумблер теплохолод нейтрально. You know, put the switch, uh, the uh, temperature control switch in the neutral position, and АСТР does not impact anything. So let us leave it as is. So, Sergei, can you uh, tell us what the position of your temperature control uh, switch right now? Inaudible. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 10 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov on the left and right of your screen, respectively, uh, flying over Mongolia as they take a moment uh, to catch their breath. Uh, in front of uh, Ryzhikov is the container uh, with the uh, new fluid regulator unit that uh, they are in the process of working uh, to install to replace an older unit that has been in the Zarya module since uh, it was launched as the first element of the International Space Station 22 years ago. Uh, guys, as you, uh, you probably understand that we have a, a tag up here on the ground uh, discussing the issue. Yes, they are, uh, the size of the bolts is 14, 
Не два лежит. На крышке КВД. Yes, you can see here the KVD cover. There are 12 there, 12. The ones that are uh, securing uh, the uh, housing. Guys, go ahead, Moscow. We have a suggestion to try to unfasten these bolts in the following way. So you will have the wretched wrench, and uh, there is, it has the um, handle that can be removed, and between the handle of the uh, wretched wrench and between the cover, try to pull it uh, there and uh, try to get this bolt off. You know, this handle wouldn't go into in inside here. Not accessible enough. Maybe the wing nut should be removed um, at this time so that it is not an, uh, does not create an additional impediment there. Stand by one. You know, to tell the truth, um, it, uh, it won't succeed, this idea. Copy. You know, let's give it another try together. Of course, it's not very easy with, to do it uh, only by you. You know, if uh, I can try to adjust the head somewhere on the boat, that's the main problem 
Of course, you know, there is not enough access here. No joy. You know, we cannot attach to it. It is also there is a half spherical uh, cover here, so it w it um, does not give us enough access. Please put the old panel in its original location. Copy. Let's pull it up a little bit, hook, on, hook it up too, and maybe we can get a better position from the gap spanner. Kind of long. And a little bit closer. Sure. And a little bit more. Unintelligible. Stand by one. Watch out. I got it. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 20 minutes into the spacewalk by uh, Rizhikov on the left and Kud Sverchkov on the right as they uh, are working to properly position uh, this uh, fluid flow regulator unit on the Zarya module, uh, trying to overcome a bit of a balky bolt holding the older unit in place. Got it? 
Yes. Now we need to change the position of the hook. Are you holding it tight? Yes. And guys, the sun is coming out in a few minutes. Copy. The International Space Station passing out over the Northwest Pacific Ocean, moving from northwest to southeast. In this uh, orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Uh, Again, this is the first uh, task external to the work that was done earlier to validate the uh, pressurization and hatch seal integrity of the Poisk module for use for Russian spacewalks. SM. Uh, I can't really move further. That's okay. That's Enough. Like about so? And I have it secured on my side. Got it? I did. I got it. And let's do the pull test. Pull test. Successful. Connector. Got it? I do. Artyom? Connector. Jeha 1. We are ready to meet it. You have our go. We have it connected. And covered up. Awesome. Do you need us to take any pictures? Because it's a little bit dark here right now. And the connector is secure. Do you want us to cover it up with the MLI flap? Let them check. Moscow, how do you copy? We copy. Sorry, guys, I was a little bit distracted. Come again. We have installed it, everything, and, do you, and connected the connector. Do you want us to take any pictures? No. Uh, Sergey, in two and a half minutes, the sun is coming out. And let's start moving back to MRM-1 with the airtight container in tow. We're going to be bringing it back. All right, the connectors are covered up with the MLI. Unintelligible. Uh, 
Да, ребят, перед тем, как Guys, снимать гермоконтейнер, right закрываем, закрываем So, uh, the first task of today's spacewalk, external to the Poisk airlock, uh, is now complete. The installation of a new uh, fluid flow regulator unit on the Zarya module of the International Space Station to replace an aging unit. Uh, that uh, older unit uh, has been inserted into that cylindrical container, the barrel-shaped container that you see between Sergei Rizhikov on the left and Sergei Kudsvrchkov on the right. It will be brought back inside the Poisk airlock, and that will enable uh, the next task to be undertaken, that being uh, the disconnection of a uh, telemetry antenna uh, at the interface between the Zvezda service module and the Piers docking compartment, the older airlock that has been used to date for Russian-based spacewalks. That uh, telemetry antenna then will be connected to the interface uh, between Zvezda and Poisk, now being used for Russian spacewalks. Is closed. Copy. So the PRV is closed. And we, the two wing screws on my side are tight. Copy. Guys? Go ahead. Just a slight delta from our specialist regarding the PRV valve. You need to... So regarding the as the valve, you need to leave them open. We are going to close them only after they repress. Okay, we copy. Yeah, as the valve is open, your valve is open. 
copy. Please stand by. Ребят, приступаем к демонтажу контейнеров с площадки фиксации. Проверяем страховку двумя точками. Pressurize container. Remove it. Air, remove the airtight container from the attachment frame. And put it into the working configuration. Okay, we are opening up the latches. Copy. Left latch is open, right latch is open. And we are putting the we are putting the latches into the working configuration. Copy. And I got the airtight container. I am handing it over to you. And guys, remove, uh, move it into MRM2. So be very careful with the tethers and with the tethers for the container. Okay, I have it secured. Let me move a little bit farther away. I got the container. With the old uh, fluid uh, regulator unit uh, in that airtight container, uh, Sergei Ryzhikov on the left, Sergei Kud Sverchkov on the right, will carry it back to the uh, Poisk airlock to stow it for now. And then we'll get on with the second uh, task for the day, the uh, repositioning of a telemetry antenna, disconnecting it from the Piers docking compartment, which no longer will be used as an airlock for Russian spacewalks and uh, installing it uh, at the interface between the Zvezda service module and the Poisk airlock being used today for the first time for Russian EVAs. We are now two hours, 35 minutes into this spacewalk, the 232nd in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades and the eighth out of the International Space Station this year.
Excuse me, Steve. Bill. Okay, I have moved, and I'm handing it over to you. You got it. And I have moved the GAP banner and attached it. And the shortcut. And I have the kit attached to the GAP banner, and I continue my movement. And I'm I've got the kit. All right, for the warm cold handle, please put it in the manual position because we see the temperature increasing. All right, let me translate and I'll do it. And I'll need to move to the gap banner too. Yeah, go ahead. All right, the hook is connected to the gap spanner. We see that. And the long one is on the handrail. Short one is on the second handrail for translation. And the kit is on the handrail. I got it. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 40 minutes into today's spacewalk as Sergei Ryzhikov on the left and Sergei Kud Sprchkov on the right wrangle the uh, container with the old discarded uh, fluid flow regulator taken from the Zarya module and replaced with a new unit. They're uh, moving it back uh, to the Poisk module to be stowed before they press ahead with the other work on tap for today. All right, and I can... 
attach myself here to this handrail. And you can hold it for a second, it's going to be better. So the same frame on the translation handrail as previously, not very convenient. Oh, wait. Hold on. It's your head caught up there. Stand by. Hold on. Okay, now you fit through. Okay. Sergey, so what is that pesky frame? Well, it's like this um, tri triangle-like triangular frame that the handrail is attached by, so you have to really finagle your way around it. It's the one that is like triangular. So if you are at the very edge and very close to that frame, uh, the hook connects there really good. I am on the handrail for DC1, and I got the kit. Copy. We see it. And I'm moving along the gap spanners. You are. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, a correction to this particular task with the fluid flow regulator. Uh, the two cosmonauts were on to open that airtight container containing the uh, replacement fluid flow regulator because of a balky bolt. It sounded uh, from the uh, conversation with the Russian flight controllers that they had been able to overcome that, but they did not. So the Russian flight control team instructed the two cosmonauts to abort the task, and uh, they're bringing that container back inside Poisk, leaving the uh, old fluid flow regulator, which is still operative uh, inside the uh, Zarya module. So again, this task has been aborted uh, for the two cosmonauts because of their inability uh, to open up the uh, container housing uh, the new fluid flow regulator. Let me move as well.
перенес ты порчу на Рим-2. They have transferred it to an Рим-2. Я вот так. Да. And the kit? Did you get it? Yes. And I will continue translating along uh, the handrails. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 47 minutes into the uh, spacewalk. You see uh, Sergei Ryzhikov in the foreground and Sergei Kud Sverchkov with the blue stripes on his suit. And in between them is the uh, container that they were unable to uh, get open that houses the uh, replacement fluid flow regulator unit for the Zarya module. The intent had been uh, to replace an older unit in Zarya, which is still operating with this new unit, but they were unable to uh, open that container because of a stubborn bolt. After uh, almost an hour of trying, uh, Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow instructed them to stand down from this work. It will be revisited on a future spacewalk, and uh, the new fluid regulator unit uh, will be stowed inside uh, the Russian segment of the space station for the time being. That task has been aborted. I got it. I got it. Inaudible. Copy. Thanks. I got it. It's two, two, two. Thank you. 
Two to two, I got it. Okay, I hand it over to you. I got it. Guys, we had a quick handover, moving towards the EV hatch, correct? Uh, yes, we are on plane three now and moving towards it now. Copy. And uh, we will have to rehook the hooks here on the shortcut handrails. Copy. And, uh, Sergey, make sure you position yourself in such a way that it's uh, convenient for you to do the uh, transit B antenna uh, uh, feeder unit operation. And Sergey 1 will be on its own. Why? And how this is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 53 minutes into today's spacewalk by Sergey Ryzhikov and Sergey Kud Sverchkov. Uh, to recap, uh, the two cosmonauts uh, spent uh, uh, part of the time this morning, uh, depressurizing and repressurizing and conducting leak checks to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. That uh, all designed to verify uh, the integrity of Poisk to be used as an airlock for future Russian spacewalks, replacing the Piers docking compartment that has been in use uh, since uh, 2001 as both a docking port and an airlock for Russian East. Poisk now will serve that role until the arrival next year of the, the multipurpose laboratory mo module to be launched on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The uh, spacewalk today began at 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, moved a, a container to the Zarya module of the International Space Station, within which uh, was a new fluid regulator uh, component uh, to help uh, the flow of fluids and the plumbing system of Zarya. However, after uh, working uh, with a bulky bolt uh, for some period of time, the two cosmonauts were ordered to abort that task. They could not get the container open with the replacement unit. And so they're in the process of stowing the unit back inside Poisk. The older fluid regulator unit in Zarya is still operating uh, and uh, working just. Uh, it was to be replaced with the new unit, but that uh, task will be put off until a future date. The next uh, task on uh, the timeline for the crew after they stow this container uh, will be uh, to make their way uh, towards the interface uh, that you see just uh, on the lower left-hand corner of your screen uh, between Poisk and the Zvezda service module. They'll disconnect a telemetry antenna and reconnect it uh, at the uh, interface between Poisk and the service module, disconnecting it from the interface between peers and the Zvezda service module. That uh, being one of the first tasks associated with the decommissioning of the Poisk, I'm sorry, the Piers module, the Piers docking compartment will be decommissioned and the removal of that telemetry antenna uh, from uh, the interface between Piers and Zvezda and its reconnection to the interface between Poisk and Zvezda will be the first in a series of steps that will uh, lead uh, to uh, the decommissioning of Piers. Uh, dismantled, uh, unberthed, and uh, deorbited.
next year in advance of the launch of the multi-purpose laboratory module. I'm moving in with uh, my head first. 